Hey everyone, the name's Aussie Flow. The Grat Man. What is there to say about this mysterious, insane character who lived in the backstage areas of Aperture Science? Well, a lot, actually. Doug is one of the only Portal characters besides Cave Johnson that has a confirmed last name. He's also responsible for writing a lot of the help of messages on the walls of the facility. But his true passion lies in painting murals, which I found scattered all around his dens in Portal 2. See, Doug as a character is quite unhinged. He's not just a normal scientist in Aperture. He's got a major character flaw that creates a lot of intrigue and mystery. And if the bizarre and unintelligible writing he leaves behind don't tell you it, Doug Ratman suffers from mental illness, specifically the one known as schizophrenia. Now, I will preface this video with one thing before going further. Discussing mental illness is a difficult thing to do. Discussing fictional characters who have very real mental issues that real people suffer from is an even more difficult topic to approach, due to the possibility of misrepresentation. I thankfully don't suffer from schizophrenia, nor do I know anyone who has it, so I don't know how accurate the portrayal of Doug's mental illness is so I won't be using it as a major talking point. Instead, I'll be talking about his character in regards to what he is depicted as doing, rather than trying to medically judge it. Anyways, let's get on with it. These paintings are some of the biggest elements of Doug Ratman as a character. For someone who doesn't have any form of spoken lines, sorta, he communicates to the player through these murals in a figurative sense. A picture is worth a thousand words after all. This makes him an absolutely fascinating character to fans of the Portal series. He is one of the early times where we see the facility's isolated nature really act on a character in this universe. And as evidenced by a book he has, being Art Therapy, The Bennett Way, it's likely he uses his mural painting sessions as a way to ease his mind. A bit of personal therapy, if you will. As a result, Doug Ratman is easily a fan favorite, which is simultaneously really cool and hilarious when you consider he has zero in-game appearances besides the art and scrollings he leaves behind. But these dens and drawings throughout the Aperture facility is not the main topic of this video. No, far from it in fact. Instead, we'll be looking at Portal's one and only official promotional tie-in comic, known as Labrat. This is a story that serves as a perspective into the world of Aperture Science from the eyes of Doug Ratman himself. In the comic, we get to see Doug Ratman experience the events of Portal 1 from his perspective, alongside various flashbacks to scenes prior to the events of Bringing Door to Workday, and the eventual tie-in into Portal 2's beginning events. The events of this comic are pretty interesting. It's where we learn Doug was the one who shot Chell up to number 1 on the test subject order list, and that he was responsible for patching Chell's realization pod into the reserve power grid, leaving everyone else in the realization pods to die. The entire comic is almost like a surreal stream of fractured consciousness from Doug, and considering his stay of being, yeah, that makes sense. Even the underlying meaning of the comic can be a little hard to make it on the first read through of it. It feels like a really fascinating viewpoint of the Portal series that we haven't really ever seen explored in this manner before. The main topic for this video, however, comes right at the ending of the comic. So here's the obligatory spoiler warning. Go read the comic before going further if you haven't. In the final scenes of the comic, Doug Ratman gets shot by a turret, piercing his leg. Bleeding out and using the loss of his energy, he patches Chell into the reserve power grid and then drags himself into a stasis bed entering inside and falling into a deep sleep with an untreated wound. This ending right here is possibly one of the most heated debate topics in a Portal fanbase. Why? Well, the debate stems from the fact that Doug Ratman has clearly left near murals and scrollings at Aperture in Portal 2, even in seemingly new areas. So, in comes the question I am to answer. Is Doug Ratman dead or not? I actually asked you guys this question a while ago, with very interesting results on both sides. Although Doug dies at the end and won the vote both times, it was a very close call to those who voted Doug is still alive. So, in order to provide my own take on the argument, I'll be approaching this from both sides, taking in the pieces of evidence and theories that both sides of the discussion have come up with, and presenting what I believe is the most likely option for Doug Ratman's fate. Let's cover the more optimistic outlook on the situation, that Doug managed to survive his injury and is now wandering the depths of Aperture Science as he always is, now just a few thousand years later. The crux of this argument is a simple one. When GLaDOS is rebuilding Aperture Science in the first few chapters of Portal 2, you can find brand new dens created by Doug Ratman, which would be impossible if he was dead. You can also find clear signs of activity that Doug has been using these dens in a similar manner to Portal 1's. 
where he's repositioned lab equipment to service his needs. Had his meals. Good god, right man, those beans are thousands of years old. You know, the works. It's also possible that the stasis bed that Doug placed himself in has some sort of medical capabilities in general, being able to heal Doug in some capacity and first resolving the bullet wound problem. Though this specific theory about the stasis bed is a stretch even for me because there's no real evidence pointing to this being a thing they can do. Like, at all. Moving that aside however, there is something very important we need to talk about. You can hear Doug Ratman in Portal 2. Throughout some of his dens, if you listen closely, you can hear Doug Ratman mumbling to himself, seemingly on a rant that's quite incomprehensible, though many fans have tried to figure out what's being said. You can find a lot of old videos that try to subtitle what Doug Ratman is saying. As a result, there's a lot of conflicting interpretations due to the garbled nature of his voice. But one of the most agreed upon lines is that Doug Ratman says, The ship's been stolen. This line would pique a lot of people's interest in Doug. He's talking about the Borealis. Does this tell us his disappearance was actually a result of a sabotage done by Black Mesa? Perhaps in an attempt to teleport the Borealis to Black Mesa to be reverse engineered, the ship points the wrong direction and teleports to the Arctic instead, dooming everyone on board. And this all actually sounds pretty solid of a theory, plus the fact they can audibly hear Doug Ratman means this is the closest that Chell ever physically gets to Doug. So close yet out of reach, just on the other side of that wall. For my final point, I would like to bring up one of the most infamous of Doug Ratman's dens. The one in Chapter 3, Test Chamber 17 of Portal 2. Also known as SPA2 Pull the Rug. But everyone just calls this map, Pull the Rug. This den can be found in the upper corner of the chamber, accessible by the light bridge. This den is incredibly infamous due to the fact that many people claim this map to be the location of an actual visual sighting of Doug Ratman. See, the main area of the den is in a ventilation shaft, and you can portal below the den to find yourself in an office hallway, not too dissimilar to those from Portal 1's escape sequence. This leads to an observation room you can use to portal back into the test chamber. Whatever way you use to exit the den, something unprecedented occurs. Both the door up the observation room and the open panel both shut. Some say this closing of the den's entrance combined with the auditory presence of Doug Ratman, is one of the only times that Doug Ratman ever physically interacted with the players, and some people have even claimed to see him as the entrances close. Alright, we've reviewed the evidence and theories in support of Doug Ratman being alive during the events of Portal 2. Now that we've covered that, let's review the counter-arguments. So, let's go with the outlook that Doug Ratman does not survive, which honestly I believe is the more likely option. Let's go back to the start of the evidence. For one, the Lab Rat comic. Looking at Doug's wound, the terrorist clearly did a number on him, especially considering the amount of blood he's leaving on the floor as he tries to crawl away into safety. This also actually leads to Doug never walking in the comic from that point forward chronologically, just left to drag his way everywhere. Not only that, but the amount of blood loss actually causes Doug Ratman to lose consciousness, which is not a good sign for Doug's well-being if he is to survive beyond the events of Lab Rat comic. The theory that the stasis beds are capable of medical care for its occupants is one that hinges entirely on headcanon, as mentioned even in section talking from the optimistic outlook. Furthermore, let's actually analyze the argument that you can hear Doug Ratman speaking. So the audio of Doug's supposed rambles is actually part of a music track from the game. This track is known as Ghost of Ratman, and I think that name alone kind of destroys the argument presented that Doug is physically there with Chell, instead being a paranormal occurrence. Ghosts might be real in the shared Portal Half-Life universe. Who knows, the ghostly screams of Honor Rail from Half-Life 1 and the distant voices of children's past in Half-Life 2's playground seem to indicate that paranormal is real in this universe. We have aliens, why not ghosts too? Plus, just as a little bonus, you know how Doug Ratman seems to be saying something in those ghostly rambles of his? Well, he does have a voice actor, being none other than Mark Laidlaw. A name I'm sure that many Half-Life fans in particular will recognize considering he was practically lifeblood driving the Half-Life story across all the games, excluding later entries like Alex and anything further. According to Laidlaw, he actually isn't really saying anything. Reportedly, Mike Moraski, composer of Portal 2's soundtrack, gave Laidlaw a script that involved a whole bunch of scientific words jumbled together, and then was instructed to read them, I quote, 
as crazily as possible. This recording of Laidlaw was then taken and edited further to be even more incomprehensible to understand, and was used as the Doug Ratman vocals that are heard in the Ghost of Ratman track. Any supposed tangible speech people claim to have worked out is just a case of pareidolia, but on the auditory level, which is unfortunate but makes sense. Moving over to the incident that we see occur in Pull the Rug, perhaps the answer to Doug's presence is simply the easiest one. There is no Doug Ratman model in Portal 2, nor is there any scripting present in the map for one of the many silhouette human models used in the human vault to appear either. Any supposed Doug Ratman physical sightings seen in this map are pretty much just people mistaking the movement of the door or panel for the silhouette of a person standing near it, since you will typically expect someone to be doing that, but... Uh, we... We kinda forgot GLaDOS exists? She's simply sealing up the exit so you can't escape the test chambers again. She knows how bad that went the first time they let Chell slip by. Now, if you've been reviewing the counter arguments, I very clearly missed out on one of them. The elephant or test chamber facility in the room. How is Doug Ratman writing new scrollings in new parts of the aperture facility? Answer is actually shockingly simple. Ratman's dens tend to only be found in the lapidated sections of the aperture facility, the parts that existed when he was still running around the place. GLaDOS is actively rebuilding Aperture Science throughout the first few chapters of Portal. I think it's integral to note that the moment you escape is when GLaDOS finishes a cleanup of Aperture Science and... there's no more dens. GLaDOS silently throughout the first few chapters of Portal 2 wipes all remnants of humanity that Aperture Science once had, and so too, Doug's artwork which is one of the many victims in this erasure of human culture. Any officers you find beyond this point are devoid of humanity. It's all sterile, the bare essentials needed to run the facility. This topic of humanity's erasure is something I plan to talk about in the future, but here it's relevant to bring up, because just like all the coffee mugs and papers you once saw populating the spaces, Doug's murals are all washed away by the sands of time, never to be seen by anyone again, and GLaDOS ultimately got the last laugh on Doug Ratman's legacy. And with that, we've taken into account both sides of the argument, and I'm here to form my own take on it. What is Doug Ratman's ultimate fate in the Portal series? That counter-argument evidence didn't exactly answer anything in regards to whether or not he got out of the stasis pod. Well, I believe I have something else to present. While I personally like to lean towards the interpretation of Doug Ratman does not survive, I realize something. I think we missed the point. I am presenting the option here that perhaps we are stuck looking at this in a binary sense, and that there is an implicit third option, and it's something that is very close to tied to Doug Ratman as a whole. I think Doug is not necessarily dead, nor is he exactly someone you'd call alive, but instead he has become the physical embodiment of Schrodinger's cat. Yeah, that sounds to be a little out of left field. But Doug Ratman is very much in a time with this concept. If you don't know what Schrodinger's cat means, first off, good to see you having climbed out from under the rock you're living under. To quickly summarize though, Schrodinger's cat is a thought experiment devised by Aaron Schrodinger to illustrate the problems he had with quantum mechanics. The thought experiment being that, that a cat is placed in a box with a guide counter, that if it detects any form of radiation, such as an atom decaying, it will release a poison that kills the cat. The thought experiment goes on to say then, that until the box is open, the cat is in a quantum state of being both dead and alive. Doug is intertwined with this concept. One of the murals that Doug Ratman left behind is one that explicitly is related to the concept of Schrodinger's cat, showing a cat escaping from a box and a whole bunch of ridden rambles, surrounded by various cat-related media. It, is that a cat boy companion cube? Pulling back to the Labyrinth comic within the flashback that occurs once Slug Ratman falls unconscious, GLaDOS does a little jab at the Schrodinger's cat thought experiment, talking about how she performed the proposed experiment, and not a single time did the optimistic reality occur. In a bit of fractured stream of consciousness, we learn a context behind this in the flashback that occurs next, being that this experiment GLaDOS has occurred on bringing a cat to work day, and that GLaDOS had requested access to neurotoxin from it. When Doug Ratman patches Chell's relaxation pod into the reserve power grid, he describes her just the same as the cat, dead and alive until someone opens a box. Then he says that perhaps it's time that he slept too, that he too becomes Schrodinger's cat. With him rapidly losing blood from his untreated wound, he drags himself onto his companion cube, then climbs into the stasis bed. 
It shuts and he enters a deep sleep. The rat, both dead and alive, until someone opens the box. And if Chell is the one to have come out alive, then it can only spell bad news for Doug. But perhaps we will never know, because to this day, that box of his remains unopened. And only the one who unseals it will know what became of him.